the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. <coughs> Welcome, my dear friends. All of us here, we are representing not only our own families, we are representing to the Lord our whole parish family and our Saint Hedwig community. We are just here as messengers of the, uh, of the church to present messengers of our uh, faith community to present our intentions to the suffering Lord on the cross. Uh, I heard a very beautiful meditation our Holy Father had today. Uh, the Angelus um, at midday. I thought I would share with you at least one or two sentences. He, he said, Lord, we are sinking. He compares our present situation of the world to that boat on which our Lord, uh, the apostles were when the storm came and they were so fearful, they thought they were dying. And uh, the Lord came to rescue them. So this is what Holy Father says. Yes, we had hit the bottom of immor immorality, of all kind of atrocities committed in our centuries all kind of crimes, we had hit the bottom. But Lord, we ask you to rescue us, to save us, to help us recover from this virus, from all kind of evils. Help us to turn, to come back to you and be healed, sound, and happy and always united with you. What a beautiful message he offers us today. So, with Holy Father, we pray to you, O Lord Jesus, for protecting, especially our parishioners, our St. Henry community, from this virus, from this terrible disease, and help scientists to find the medicine, help our country to recover from it uh, and the whole world. And also present your own personal intentions at this very moment to our suffering Lord on the cross. And Deacon Rick was so kind to lead us today through this devotion. <coughs> The first station, <clears throat> the agony of Jesus in the Garden of Olives. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have saved the world. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. Let us pray. Jesus felt sorrow and dread over what lay ahead of him. He prayed for the burden to be lifted and the cross to be removed but only if the Father willed it so. When Christ saw clearly that he must drink of the bitter cup, then our Lord totally accepted his future. Not my will, but thine be done. His example teaches us how to pray at all times, especially in the midst of our own crosses and cups of suffering. Do not reprove me in your anger, Lord, nor punish me in your wrath. Have pity on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are trembling. In utter terror is my soul. 
Jesus in the garden praying, fears before your father laying, yet obedient to his will. The second station, the betrayal and arrest of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have saved the world. Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. Let us pray. Rejection always hurts. It tears at our self-esteem and leaves us doubting our own worth. Even the turning down of simple invitations can wound us. Betrayal, especially by a friend, hurts even more. Jesus had prayed all night before selecting his 12 apostles, including Judas. Judas had also been his companion for three years hearing the Lord's words and observing his miraculous deeds. Now he betrays his Savior with a kiss and for but a few dollars. Remembering Jesus' hurt and pain in the garden can help us deal with those times when we feel rejected and betrayed. Turn, Lord, save my life. In your mercy, rescue me. For who among the dead remembers you? Who praises you in soul? Sold for gain by your disciples, handed over to your people. King held captive by his own. The third station, the Sanhedrin condemns Jesus. We adore you, O Christ. And we praise you, because by your holy cross you have saved the world. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? Let us pray. Envy and jealousy can be like cancerous diseases within us. They spread throughout our whole being leading to uncharitable conversations, false accusations, and other destructive actions. We see all of this played out among the religious leaders of Jesus' time as they condemn Christ without basis. Our Lord offers a model for us. He did not defend himself, but remained silent before the false accusations. Jesus did, however, assert himself, speaking the truth regardless of the costs. I am wearied with sighing, all night long, tears drench my bed. My couch is soaked with weeping. My eyes are dimmed with sorrow, worn out because of all my foes. Gentle volumes and convicted of the sin that we've committed. Awful for love you bear our gift. The fourth station, Peter denies Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have saved the world. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. 
The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. Let us pray. All of us are like Peter to an extent, willing but weak. We make resolutions but don't keep them. We try to start a new life but slip back again into a way of darkness. Yet weak as Peter was, not only at Jesus' trial, but at other times as well, he truly loved Jesus. In fact, it was his love that repeatedly set him up for failure. All of Christ's other followers ran away after his arrest. Peter, however, followed along into the courtyard, only there to see his weakness take over. Almost immediately, he wept because of what he had done. A few short days afterwards, Jesus would take this weak but loving follower and make him head of the church, supplying him with divine strength to overcome his human weakness. Away from me, all who do evil. The Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my prayer. The Lord takes up my plea. My foes will be terrified and disgraced. All will fall back in sudden shame. Even Peter now denies you, claiming even not to know you, just as you had prophesied. The fifth station, Pilate condemns, Je condemns Jesus to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have saved the world. As soon as morning came, the chief priests and the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, crucify him. Pilate said to them, why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. Let us pray. Pilate seemed anxious to release Jesus almost looking for a way to do so. But the crowd would not allow that. Pilate capitulated, fearing for his future and lacking the courage to do what was right. We have, on occasion, acted similarly. Out of depths I call to you, Lord. Lord, hear my cry. May your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, mark our sins, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, and so you are revered. To the ruling powers delivered by the crowd your verdict rendered. Shunned by those you came to save. The sixth station. Jesus is scourged and crowned with thorns. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have saved the world. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged, and the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head, and clothed him in a purple cloak, and they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! 
and they struck him repeatedly. Let us pray. Pilate had Jesus scourged, a truly cruel punishment. He was probably stripped to the waist and made to bend over a short pillar. Then he was lashed several dozen times with the whip, the first few of those strokes cutting open the skin on his back. After the scourging, a wooden band or crown of long, sharp thorns was pressed into his scalp. The pain had to be excruciating. When our own head hurts or we suffer some other bodily pain, it would do well for us to follow the advice in the letter to the Hebrews. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross. I wait with longing for the Lord. My soul waits for his word. My soul looks for the Lord more than sentinels look for daybreak. Hang on the head and the pack you carry. May we just but briefly tarry. Pondering now what love would do. The seventh station. Jesus is mocked by the soldiers and given his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have saved the world. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They began to salute him, kept striking his head with the reed and spitting upon him. They, be, they knelt before him in homage, and when they mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. Let us pray. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. He deserves our praise and reverence. Yet the soldiers placed upon him a dirty cloak instead of a royal garment. They handed him a thin reed instead of the golden staff used by kings. Through all this humiliation, Jesus remained silent. How different with us. While not as pure, as important as Christ, we nevertheless become angry and defensive when someone attacks or criticizes us in any way. More than sentinels for daybreak, let Israel look for the Lord. For with the Lord is kindness, with him is full redemption, and God will redeem Israel from all their sins. Now the cross as Jesus bore it has become for us who share it, symbol of our victory. The A station. Simon the Cyrenian helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have saved the world. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian who had, was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. Let us pray. Those in charge of Jesus' crucifixion compelled Simon of Cyrene to help carry the Lord's cross. He did not volunteer or willingly accept the task, but that is no surprise. Simon was only passing by and presumably knew little about Christ. We, on the other hand, do know Jesus, and we have heard his words about the necessity of taking up our own crosses each day and walking in his footsteps. What is our response? Must we be pressed to carry our crosses be they big or small, or do we accept them willingly? As long as I kept silent, my bones wasted away. I groaned all the day, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength withered as in dry summer heat. Then I declared my sin to you, my guilt I did not hide. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Simon bears with hesitation, glorious sign of our salvation. 
that which we should bear with joy. The ninth station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have saved the world. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. Let us pray. Compassion means literally to suffer with someone. Empathy means to feel with them. These women displayed both qualities as they accompanied Jesus so bruised and disfigured on this sorrowful journey through the streets of Jerusalem. We imitate their example when we listen with love for another's troubles, hold another's hand by a hospital bed, or embrace another who is grieving. Lord, punish me no more in your anger. In your wrath, do not chastise me. Your arrows have sunk deep in me. Your hand has come down upon me. Like the women at your passion, loving hearts within us fashion, that we might share others' pain. The tenth station, Jesus is crucified. We adore you, O Christ. And we praise you, because by your holy cross you have saved the world. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. Let us pray. First they drove nails through his hands and feet. Then they raised him on the cross, where he hung painfully for three hours, an example of patience for all to study. Pope John the 23rd has a crucifix on his bedroom wall. He prayed in front of it before retiring, upon arising, and whenever cares awakened him during the night. A cross, he said, is the primary symbol of God's love for us. My Lord, my deepest yearning is before you. My groaning is not hidden from you. My heart shudders, my strength forsakes me. The very light of my eyes has fell. Friends and companions shun my pain. My neighbors stand far off. Arms spread wide our pain in embracing. Stain of blood our sin. The 11th station, Jesus promises paradise to the penitent criminal. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have saved the world. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we re received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you. Today you will be with me in paradise. Let us pray. One criminal said no to Christ, the other yes. To his penitent companion on Calvary, Jesus promised immediate forgiveness and entrance into heaven. When we doubt God's willingness to forgive us, when we keep punishing ourselves for past mistakes, when we dread the thought of standing before the pure Christ with our not so pure lives, we might recall this scene on the cross and draw hope from it. 
Have mercy on me, God, in your goodness. In your abundant compassion, blot out my offense. Wash away all my guilt. From my sin, cleanse me. Let me hear sounds of joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Even in the midst of suffering, Jesus' words of comfort are plain. This day you shall dwell with me. The twelfth station. Jesus speaks to his mother and to his disciple. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have saved the world. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. Let us pray. With these words, Jesus gives his mother to us, making her our mother as well. Mary becomes the mother of the church. We can rely upon her for help and look to her as a model. Here she stands at the foot of the cross, offering her son for us before the whole world. She reminds us that if we unite our sufferings, both large and small, with her son on the cross and with her at the foot of the cross, we will share in Christ's work of bringing grace and blessings to others. Hasten to answer me, Lord, for my spirit fails me. Do not hide your face from me, lest I become like those who send me to the pit. At she dawn, let me hear of your kindness, for in you I trust. Show me the path I should walk, for to you I entrust my life. Jesus gives to us our mother in his blood and our sisters' brothers. God makes us his family. The 13th station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have saved the world. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, look, he's calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked the sponge with wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink saying, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Let us pray. Jesus as a faithful Jew would have prayed the Psalms regularly it is no surprise then that these words come from Psalm 22 are on his lips during the intense agony of his last moments. While this cry might seem to be a sign of despair or hopelessness, it reveals rather the depths of his anguish and the intensity of his pain. Shortly afterward, he surrenders totally to his father's will. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Who might wish to follow Christ's example letting these words be the last on our lips as we wait each night. Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have saved the world. When it was already evening, since it was a day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, was himself awaiting the kingdom of God courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. 
Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Let us pray. Starting on Good Friday, the church enters a brief period of silent grief, a time of mourning that looks with hope to the joy of the resurrection that will be proclaimed and celebrated at the Easter Vigil. We grieve in much the same way when someone we love dies. There are tears and sorrow, of course, but rays of hope and belief in the later reunion bring us comfort, understanding, and strength. My soul rests in God alone, from whom comes my salvation. God alone is my rock and salvation, my secure height. I shall never fall. My soul be at rest in God alone, from whom comes my hope. Hidden from the side of heaven, earth's dark womb receives our victim. Now our hope seems overcome. The 15th station, Jesus rises from the dead. We adore you, O Christ. And we praise you, because by your holy cross you have saved the world. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early, when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. Let us pray. Uh, After the cross cross came the the crown. crown. After After three three days days of mourning mourning and waiting, the The church church celebrates Jesus' Jesus' resurrection. resurrection. He is victorious. The light of the the world world has conquered darkness. The The way, the the truth, truth, and the life life has overcome death. death. We hear Jesus' words, peace be with you. We feel joy in our hearts. We sing again that acclamation of praise, alleluia. His triumph is ours as well. On Easter Sunday and in the many other Easter's of our lives, we rise above our families, our burdens, and our struggles. We too emerge victorious. Throughout our own Good Friday, the risen Lord is by our side, pledging that we too will rise again, both here on earth and hereafter, in the life yet to come. Praise the Lord, my soul. I shall praise the Lord all my life. Sing praise to my God while I live. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, Zion, through all generations. Life and love are now victorious. Past the Lamb who was slain for us. Come and reign as Lord of all. Let us prepare our hearts for Holy Communion. Our Father. sins of the world, body of Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Beloved Mother of the Annunciation, after God, you, Our Lady, are the greatest comforter to us. In this beautiful church dedicated to you, you have always assured us of your love by giving us in times of suffering and struggle, strength, consolation, and hope. That is why today, in this time of crisis, we entrust ourselves into your motherly care and ask your son Jesus for his mercy upon us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. Now, mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. And once again, thank you so much for attending the Stations of the Cross, this wonderful uh, devotion. We thank Deacon Rick for leading us. And we thank uh, others who were kind of um, helping us to follow guidelines from archdiocese and from our um, health officials. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, O praise and all thanksgiving be every moment. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, Thanksgiving be every moment, amen. O sacrament, most holy, O sacrament divine. Praise you. Thank you, and have a wonderful Sunday, a wonderful weekend. Stay healthy, please.